Hi everyone, it's Alejandra and I'm sitting in my kitchen in front of the refrigerator and I'm going to do a video today and show you guys how I organize my fridge to keep all the contents inside as fresh as possible. So if you have been requesting this video because a lot of people have been asking for a fridge tour, then this video is for you. Okay, let me grab the camera and we will get started. Okay, so this is my refrigerator. It's not overly big, it's not overly large, it's just normal standard size. These are my Valentine's Day cards from my Valentine's. This one's from Ed. It says, sometimes I wonder why I put up with you. That was a really funny card inside. <laughs> we always give each other funny cards because we both like to laugh. Okay, so this is the inside of my fridge. And I'm going to give you a tour shelf by shelf. Okay, so up here is where I keep all of the milk and eggs. And then over here is the juice and the yogurt. And you want to keep all the things that need to remain the coldest all the way in the back because the back of the fridge is the coldest part of the fridge as opposed to the door. The door is the warmest part of the fridge. So that's why the milk is all the way back there, the yogurt and the eggs. And let me show you guys a quick thing about the eggs. So Ed and I eat a lot of hard boiled eggs. So every time I boil eggs, I just put them back inside the carton and then I just put a little label on the top of the egg so we know which ones are hard boiled. So every time we see a smiley face, we know that these are hard boiled eggs. They're not normal eggs, so we wouldn't want to crack this and use this to make a scrambled egg or whatever. Okay, that's just a little trick or tip that I do. Okay, um, there's really nothing else cool about this shelf. That's really the only thing. Okay, down here is where we keep um, chilled wine, like white wines, and you're supposed to store wine on its side so the cork remains wet at all times. So I use this little red thing in the back, it's called the Fridge Monkey, and it's from um, Container Store, I think it was like $5.99, and basically what it does is it prevents the bottles from rolling around because of those like grooves that are inside of them. So if I put it right here, it's not going to roll over unless I move it, so it's really nice. And this is an extra beer bottle. Just put that right there. And then in the drawer right here is where we keep all of our deli foods. So these are this is like where the cheeses are kept, the lunch meat, the turkey breast, the ham. There's these emergency condiments. When we run out of real ketchup, then we go to the backup ones. There's mayonnaise down there. These are always like lifesavers when like you run out of a condiment. Okay, sauerkraut, and then there's like pancake mix. There was really nowhere else to put that, so that's why it's in there. Okay, and then down here, this is where, this is probably the best tip of the refrigerator. Okay, so a lot of times we buy bags of food that don't really stack that nicely. Like, for example, and do you see how nice this bin slides? I will get to that in a minute. Okay, but for example, we buy like bags of lettuce or bags of spinach um, bread, or like a thing of ravioli. Like these things don't really stack that nicely on top of something else and they waste space. So what I did to maximize space, because you can see space is totally maximized because there's what, like a one inch gap right here? Just enough space so it slides out nicely. What I did was I got this bin and it's actually a uh, filing tote from the container store. And I realized that I left the price tag on. It was $6.99 from the container store. It's in the office section. So I got this filing tote to put all the unstackable foods or foods that are difficult to contain. And it works beautifully. Like, it's just the right size for all of our unstackable food. And it slides nice. And I don't know, it's just great. That's I think that's the best tip of the refrigerator. And before I had like this whole configuration, I had more bins in here, and then I found that sometimes bins can be constricting, so you only want to have like maybe one large one kind of like this. You don't want to fill your fridge with like all of these bins everywhere. A lot of times you see pictures of organized fridges and there's just they're all filled with these bins. And while it looks beautiful and it looks uniform, it's not really uh, functional. Okay, so moving on. So Ed and I eat a lot of um, almonds and walnuts, so we keep them in the fridge because they last longer in these airtight containers. Okay, and then over here is where I keep all of the leftovers or anything I make. So like, 
here's a fruit salad, and then here is um, like leftovers from last night's dinner. And then I put these label once labels on the um, on the outside of the container, and then I write the date of when I made that. So this is chicken I made last night, and then this is fruit salad from Valentine's Day. And what I like about these labels is that you can use a permanent marker to write the label on, and then you just erase it and it comes right off. Let me show you where I keep the marker and eraser. So I keep the marker and eraser at the top of the fridge. It's Velcroed here, just like that. Here's the marker. It's a permanent marker. You guys see that? It's a super permanent ink. And then I keep the eraser on this side. Again, it's Velcroed to the fridge. Okay, so then I come down here, and let me show you exactly how this works. Okay, so I take the eraser, and then I just erase the date once the food is done. Just like that. It comes right off really easily. And then I take a permanent marker. Like, this is permanent. Do you see it says super permanent on it? Can you guys see that? It says permanent. Okay. Take my permanent marker and then I just write my new date on it. Like, let me write today's date. Just like that. That looks really sloppy, but you guys get the point. So I just change the date every time the contents change. And then when I'm done with the marker and done with the eraser, I just go ahead and Velcro it back to the top of the fridge. Just like this. That one goes there. And that one goes there. And when I close the door of the fridge, the marker or the eraser does not interfere. Like, let me show you guys. You see it's going to close and there's still like a one inch gap. See? It doesn't interfere. Like, talk about maximizing space, right? Okay. So, you saw how I handle all the leftovers. Let me show you down here. Okay, so here's where I keep all the fruits and veggies. This is our grab-and-go drawer. And basically, every time I get back from the grocery store, I will immediately wash, dry, and chop all the vegetables or all of the fruit that we're going to take for lunch or take on the go. So it's like celery, grapes, tomatoes. Now, you're not supposed to keep tomatoes in the fridge, but I haven't really, like, I don't really notice a big difference when I keep them out. And they seem to go really fast in our house, so it doesn't really make a difference for us. But you are supposed to keep them at room temperature outside of the fridge. Okay, so grab and go drawer and then the fruits and veggies. And then I talked about all this stuff up here. So now let me show you the door. Okay, so this is the door of our refrigerator and the door of the refrigerator is the warmest part of the refrigerator. So you wanna keep all of your condiments and beverages, like non-dairy beverages, like soda or juices um, or like some kind of water bottles on the door instead of taking up um, prime real estate space in the main part of the refrigerator. Okay, so here's where I keep all the butter. There's nothing really special about that. Um, all the condiments are up here. So what I do for like the jellies and things that easily get sticky, I put them in one of these drink koozies. So I went to Virginia Tech, so this is from Virginia Tech. But I put them in these drink koozies so when the jelly drips down, it drips inside of the koozie and not to the bottom of the jar leaving the jar sticky, and then getting the, um, the bottom of the shelf sticky. So I do that for both of the jellies. Okay, and then down here is where I have, so there's beer, and then there's more condiments. And I keep all of the beer in this um, cardboard carrier because it prevents the bottles from rattling against each other when the door opens and closes. The rattling noise can be annoying, so that's why I keep it inside of um, this cardboard thing. Okay, and then down here is where I keep all of the soda, beverages, and then there's soy sauce. So you can see that everything is labeled. Beverages, condiments, beer, condiments, butter, and you can see my eraser, my marker, juice and yogurt, milk and eggs, wine, dairy foods, veggies and fruit, or um, fruits and veggies, grab and go. So then I didn't label this whole shelf in general because the stuff kind of switches in and out. So I didn't want the label to be in inaccurate, so then I just didn't label the bottom at all. Everything is labeled with a red font on a white label. So everything, so all the labels kind of stand out really nicely. So again, you want to keep all the stuff that needs to remain the coldest 
all the way in the back of the fridge and then the things that don't really matter as much on the side of the door. Okay, so that's everything inside of my refrigerator. If you have different organizing tips and tricks for the refrigerator or the freezer, I would love to see them. Leave a video response and uh, show me exactly what's inside your fridge and why you do things a certain way, or leave comments below, and um, I will look forward to seeing them. If you want more information on the classes I teach or the programs I have, visit my website at alejandra.tv. I will see you guys soon. Bye.